You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. Over the past 20 years, the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services has had 15 different directors. This week, I sat down with the newest director, Heidi Miller, who takes over the job and leaves her position as the director of the Department of Juvenile Justice here in Illinois. We talked about all of the issues that the department has had over the past several decades and what her plans are to address them. Here's our interview with Director Heidi Miller. All right, newly minted DCFS Director Heidi Miller, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you, Paul. You're about a month and a half in now to your ten tenure as the uh, DCFS Director. Yes. What has been the focal point going uh, in the, just the first month here? Well, that's a great question. Um, coming in as a new director, there's kind of operational things you focus on and then sort of the mission and the vision, the principle. Um, so right off the bat, you know, I'm coming in to understand how is this agency functioning? Uh, what do we do? What are, you know, who are the folks in the, the uh, primary positions? Um, and as a new director, I think it's really critical to figure out like what's going well. What are the things I want to put my elbows out and protect and sort of lift up and make sure I don't uh, screw with too much. Uh, I think, you know, philosophically as I come in, I'm really looking at kind of three things right off the bat. Um, the first is kind of identifying that we have had this upward trajectory in reports, in investigations, in kind of kids coming into care over the past five years. And so really thinking about how do we focus on prevention? How do we focus on, you know, right-sizing the agency so that we can use scarce resources to really solve a lot of the things that we have before us? I think the second thing I'm really thinking about is how do we make sure that we do everything we can to keep kids safely at home um, and make sure that you know kids are able to remain with family uh, with extended family in communities um, with all of those sort of natural connections that are going to follow them throughout their lives and really help them grow into adults into human beings um, i think the third thing you know i'm really thinking about is how do we make sure that we are embedding this agency with the value of caring for kids like they are our own kids. And you know what I mean by that is especially in the in, in the realm of you know kids who have really specialized needs are kids who who need sort of a high level of, of care, making sure that we have the nurturing, individualized, um, specialized resources and care that they need to be successful, um, to meet their individual needs and to ultimately be stable so they can kind of transition either into a home setting or into adulthood. You said you really want to protect the things that DCFS has been doing to improve over the past few years, but there are a lot of areas that have come under a lot of scrutiny with the department, especially when we're talking about areas like uh, uh, children staying in certain facilities for, for longer than they were originally supposed to. Uh, there's a lack of spots for these children to be to find homes with once they're in DCFS care and trying to exit that care. I wonder when you're coming into a position like this, when you were you know, going through that interviewing process for the job, was part of that you coming to the table with ideas that you had to maybe fix some of these, some of these areas that the department has struggled with for years now? Well, I'm really glad you asked me that question because honestly, part of the reason that I came to DCFS was because I wanted to be part of the solution for kids who need appropriate, safe, nurturing places to stay that meet their individual needs. Um, I have a lot of experience at DJJ working with a very traumatized, high needs, you know, high complexity population. Those are the kids that over the past seven years I have loved and taken care of. Um, and so I bring that sort of experience and understanding of kind of all of the wraparound services, kind of all the care and support that kids who have really complex, you know, behavioral health needs, kids who have substance use treatment disorders, kids on the autistic spectrum, um, the sorts of things that those kids might need to be successful. Um, and so, you know, coming in, I'm bringing that experience um, and that lens. Uh, and I think, you know, it is one of my core priorities. You know, within this first year as I'm coming in, I really want to make sure that we have a plan 
in place that is going to, to sort of make, you know, make sure that kids have a safe, stable, appropriate place to live and that their needs are met um, regardless of what those needs are. And we're not just talking about, you know, residential placements because a lot of kids with really complex needs want to be in a home setting too. And so we're also talking about specialized treatment foster care. We're also talking about evidence-based intensive wraparound services in communities that will let kids remain at home even though they have a lot of behavioral health needs and challenges. How do you go about creating those services in areas of the state that really don't have them? There's that vacuum mm -hmm. there in mm -hmm. those areas. Well, that's a really great question, and I'm glad you acknowledge that because there are parts of our state that are really resource starved, where there's a lot of service gaps. And so it really has to be something that is data driven. We have to look at, you know, where are their needs around the state? Um, what are we seeing based on our own work? And then we need to use our dollars wisely to, you know, invest in the type of services that really are needed. So, for example, um, I've met with a lot of judges around the state, you know, and this was also in my role as director of DJJ, and one of the top things that I've heard from the court system is there aren't enough mental health resources. And that seems to be a refrain, especially in rural communities, um, in, in southern communities, there just aren't sort of good mental health treatment resources. So, you know, making sure that we have placements that kids can go to like like Hoylton which serves you know the southern region that provides really good like wraparound services for kids those are the sorts of things we want to make sure we're investing in and we want to make sure that you know we're investing not just in like sort of the services that meet a community's needs but in the type of sort of culturally competent services that really like understand where a family where a young person is coming from and address their needs in a way that affirms their identity. So when going about all this, you talked about the data-driven approach and, and finding where those resources need to go. But then the, the other part is making sure the resources get there. And yes. I know part of, there's been a big hiring push for DCFS yes. lately, but the department has had its struggles over the years and that's led to, you know, I, 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 there were people wondering, it, frankly, who would want your job now, yes. the DCFS director job. Yes. So I wonder, talking about that public image perspective of the agency and trying to turn that around uh -huh. and then make sure people get in and you are able to find people for those jobs. Right. How is that process working right, right. and how do you go forward with that? Well, you know, you mentioned the hiring push um, and I, I do have to say coming in as a new director, I'm really grateful to former Director Smith um, and some of the work that already has been happening there because I'm coming in um, to an agency that is in a much better place than it was a few years ago in terms of hiring and staffing. Actually, in FY24, um, as of FY24, we have 23% more frontline staff than we did just in FY20. And you know, as you alluded to, you cannot do good work without enough people without the people to actually do the caring, um, to work with kids, to work with families. So it is a big push of ours. And as we go forward into this next fiscal year, we are actually asking for a headcount increase to replenish our ranks to a, a level that we haven't had in 20 years, to, to get up to 4,000 employees, um, to really replenish our frontline ranks so that we have enough people to do the work and to do the work well. I think you're right. What you said is so right on that, you know, people are drawn to come into your agency and to work for you if they believe in your vision and if they believe in your mission um, and they're, they're drawn to success. So one of the things that is important to me, especially in my first six month, months in this role, is to really set forward a vision and to work with my team to set forward a mission and a, and a set of values that drive our work that people can look at and say, I want to be a part of that. I want to join that. Especially in the aftermath of the news that Mark Smith was going to be stepping down from the position, we heard from a lot of Republican lawmakers especially talking about how they wanted to see a overhaul of this agency. And it, they were saying it's time to really start from scratch on this kind of department. Now, 
obviously you've been talking about building from within inside the already structured system, but I, I wonder in your tenure, what are you, how are you expecting to approach those kinds of conversations when we're talking about maybe dramatic changes to how DCFS operates in the state? And if there's any that maybe you have an idea of, of maybe something that maybe a significant change that could be coming. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it really starts with listening. So I've really appreciated so far the ability to sit down with legislators. You know, I've I've had breakfast, I've had, you know, lunch, I've had dinner, I've I've sat in meetings with both legislators who have been supporters and legislators who have been very vocal critics. I've, you know, met with frontline staff, I've been meeting with judges. I'm really trying to sort of just signal to everybody this door is open and I want to hear from people. I want to hear what folks think is working, what people think isn't working, um, what other folks think needs to be changed. Because the reality is DCFS is a part of the child welfare system. We don't act alone in this system. The child welfare system in Illinois involves this agency, it involves the courts, it involves you know, public guardian, it involves community providers, advocates, you know, kids and families. And I think it would be unwise to sort of come in, you know, guns a blazing and say, I alone am going to come up with the solution to all of the problems in this agency. For me, it really is starting with listening and talking to people and gathering, you know, feedback about what has been working, what hasn't, and together collaborating on, you know, what do our, what are, what is our path forward and what do we need to do? When we come back, we'll bring you more of our one-on-one -on -one interview with Director Heidi Miller.